Hello. So today I'm going to show you how to divide daylilies. I had to wait about a month for making this video because I had some beautiful daylilies here and now they're gone by. I didn't want to divide them while they were still blooming. You can. If you're going to do that though, you want to cut off all of these stems. Also, you're going to want to cut off all the flower stems anyways, just so the plant can survive a little bit easier when you divide it because you are chopping through all those roots and disturbing their home. So you want to give them as best chance as you can. So I'm going to cut all of these first. Today is a beautiful day in Maine. It's the end of August. Day lilies are pretty tough. You probably can divide them almost any time of the year as long as you're watering them well. Usually after I divide them, I put them in a pot for a little bit so to let their roots grow, but also then I can move them to the shade as needed. So that way the, the too much sun doesn't get to them and make it harder for them to survive. It has some nice little bird sounds in the background. As you can see, the reason why I'm doing this is my day lilies are starting to encroach on my sedum space and my sedum needs more space. I'm not going to divide that now because they are just starting to bloom. They're getting ready for the fall. They're a beautiful fall plant. So I'm just going to move my day lilies for now and then I can divide my sedum later this fall. Well, the flower stem's gone, so next step is I'm going to get my shovel, my spade, and I'm going to cut through the roots all the way around the base of my date lilies. These date lilies were a beautiful yellow color and they smelled so good. Uh, not all date lilies have a nice scent, but these ones happen to really smell good. I can't describe the smell. Maybe I'll put it down in the notes. As I cut through, I kind of push back on the spade as well to kind of push on the ground. You're going to want to make sure that you have good shoes or good soles on them as you do this. Push in. Pull out, and you can see it's starting to move a little bit. I think I only put these in here last year. Maybe it was two years ago. They got really big. Just they really like the spot. Over here, I'm getting into some of the roots from this shrub here. Just a little more power. Ball starting to move. You can see now it's starting to pop up. I'm going to go back around, push up harder, higher, and get underneath a little further. Alright, I think the root ball is about to come up. You can see right there, coming up. Now, I'm going to split it in half so I can divide it and put it in different places. I'm going to pull away the mulch that I have around the edges so that doesn't get in the way. And I can put it back over. And I'll find a good spot to put half of it after I divide it. And the other half will go back in the hole, though. I think I'm going to move it over just a little bit so there's more space between these two plants. So to divide it, you just gotta unfortunately just go right down through, stop those roots. So you can pull it apart. I 
really just want to make sure that you get enough of the root ball. So once you put it in the ground and water it frequently, it will survive. So, this one is in half now. I can show you a lot of the soil was really dry. I probably should have wet the soil a little bit so some of that soil would have hooked to it and come up with it. But you can see all the roots there and went right through the middle of the roots there. I'm going to set this one aside. This is going to be the one that I'm going to transplant into a pot so I can have it grow for a while. This one's going to go right back in the ground. Give it a little bit too. I can see a lot of roots from that shrub over there. So maybe moving it away from that shrub just a little bit will help it. I was surprised. I thought the soil would be pretty wet because we just had a lot of rain. So, I didn't water it ahead of time. I should have. Alright, I think I have a pretty good home for this. I'm going to get my water ready to go. I'm going to dump some water in there and move it over. Alright, so I had some technical difficulties with my camera, so now I'm back in business. Alright, so I'm going to water this hole where I'm going to put the rest of this, move it over, make sure I have a big enough hole for it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think I might want to go that way just a little more. I think I've got a good space now for the daylilies. I'm going to move it so the rounded part is facing out so people see it. And then I'm going to add a little water on the bottom there to get the bottom of the roots watered. Around the root ball, pack it in nicely. There's no air pockets. And I'm not going to com completely fill it in because I'm going to put some more water around the whole thing and soak it in nicely around the whole edge. I just want to get enough in there that it's already packed in tightly before you get it all soft and wet. You really don't want to press it down once it's all wet in there. Then it's like pressing mud and not as good for the roots. Feel like I've got it nice and solid all the way around and I'll water it thoroughly and then I'll fill in the rest with dirt. Up to the top of the root ball. I'll show you a close-up of what I did. So I left space here. You can see how there's like a little well and I'm going to fill that all the way around with a lot of water. I'm filling it up right here because this is as far as my hose reaches. So I almost made it really, really close. Water, fill up my watering can, and I just carry it from here to over there. And you can see how it's filling up around it because I made that nice little well 
and we can soak it really, really good and the water doesn't flow anywhere else. Except all around the well and soak it up good. This place stays pretty shaded, so that's why this time of day is not a big deal that I'm doing it in the middle of the day. Um, if it's not going to be very shaded and you are putting it directly in the ground and not putting it in a pot, you probably want to do it in the afternoon or on a cloudy day, just to give it at least one day to acclimate to its new space before it really gets sunny on it. All right, it's got a good amount of water. I'm gonna let that soak in, and then I will backfill with soil. So I'm also gonna divide this other piece that I took off into an, two sections because it's a little too big still for the pots that I'm gonna put it in. So I'm gonna cut right through the middle of this one. Looks like there might be like a natural place between right here and right here. So I'm gonna divide it, not exactly in half, because I'm gonna do the natural point of where it looks like it would work to divide it. All right, so now I have my two root balls. I will put those into two different canisters. Make a nice little home for these guys. Make sure the roots are all tucked in and then I'll fill it in with more soil. I'll take some of the soil from here. This one I filled in a little too much. I'll just start packing around. The one that I have over here. And then I'm moving these up to another place. And then making gardens up at another place that we own. So get these all cozy, let them acclimate for a couple weeks, and then I'll move them up there. Here's one that I already did a couple weeks ago that I moved. And this is a different daylily. I think it was more of a maroon color. So these ones I did a couple weeks ago, so these are ready to take up to my other property. Then I have had them on a wagon so I can pull them in and out of the shade as needed, or in and out of the sun as needed, and this allows me to um, make sure that they're healthy. And also when it's downpour, I usually put it under there so that way it doesn't get rained on and disturb the roots. Though by now they probably have a really good root system going. I bet it's spiraled around in there. Here I am at my compost pile to get some soil for the plants that I just potted. And as you can see, it's a little overtaken with weeds. I normally turn it over with my tractor, but my tractor's up at my other property where we're building a garage and doing some landscaping up there. And actually, I'm pretty excited to show you some footage of what we're doing up there as soon as I put that together. But for now, here we are with our daylilies. So I'm just gonna scoop up some more good, good, beautiful soil. Put them right in my pot. Tuck the soil nice, nicely around it. Make sure that all of the roots are tucked in. As you can see, here's some roots that are not tucked in. I wanna tuck them around and cover them up with some soil. And as I do that, I work my way around it and make sure that I've got everything covered. I'm also gonna pull out any of these like little extra brown pieces. And if there are any green pieces that look like they maybe had done some, taken some damage during that, could take those off as well. Throw that in my compost pile. And we just want to tidy it up and give it as much space as you can for it to acclimate to its new home. After I get this all done, I will water it. So 
the water soaked up in. Now I'm just going to fill in with soil around it and get it all even with the rest of the level of the soil in this garden. Once I do that, I will water it again. Never have too much water when you first transplant because it does not have that root base. Fill the mulch back up in. Probably come around and tidy it up a little bit too. Clean up any of the brown. So all melted up. Edges. And I'll just give it a little more water, and this thing should be pretty good. If I notice it started to wilt too much, I'll put, I might could come out and cut a little more green off it to help it survive. Could also provide it with some shade. It also sometimes does the trick as well. But make sure to give it plenty of water. Second watering can of water right over all the soil this time. Fill it in everywhere. And then I will continue to check on it periodically, especially if we don't get rain. You want to keep watering it daily for a little while, at least a couple weeks. And now you can see I've got a little more space between my sedum and my daylilies. And then once my sedum has gone by, I'll divide that and I'll probably move my sedum over a little more and I'll give them a chance to grow in there and fill in and meet each other again. And lastly, I'll water these two plants in my radio flyer that I had as a child. <laughs> One day I ran away from home with this down the street, turned it on its side and said that was going to be my home. And now I still have that radio flyer 50 years later, or almost 50 years. I'm, I must have been about four years old, so not quite 50 years then. So I'm going to give these a nice soak in. Because I have them in the wagon, I can move them to the shade after they get their water. And then I'll move them in and out of the shade periodically for a couple weeks and continue watering them. And then their root ball should have taken over and then I can bring them to a new location in my car and they should transplant really easily and I don't have to worry about watering them as much. The reason why I'm doing this is because I won't be able to water them as often at the other location because I don't live there. So getting them established in a pot is the way to go if you are not going to be around to maintain where you transplant them. So I'm just cleaning up the ones that kind of got a little um, beaten up in the process of digging it up and separating it. So I can try to repair some of them. But if it's hanging off like that, it's going to turn brown anyways and die. So clean it up, get it so all the pieces that are growing are fairly healthy. And the reason why it turns brown actually is that it is natural for it to try to survive. So it will have some of it go brown and not have to put all of the water and attention into everything and instead into just a select few leaves so that way it can survive for the following year. So plants are natural survivors and they'll take care of themselves unless you really do them a lot of harm. Daylilies, like I said, are very resilient though. I transplanted a lot of daylilies in my life time and they spread so nicely so you you do want to uh, 
thin them out every once in a while. If you don't have a space for them, give them to a neighbor. All right, these look really good now. Now I'm just gonna move them to some shade. If you find my videos useful or entertaining, please click like and subscribe. Thank you.